Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial. We are coding our Fruit Slashers game. In the last video, we started adding our slicer to the game, right? We just created the slicer here on the game start, but we're not doing anything with that yet. And with the slicer, we will be able to like destroy the fruits, to slice the fruits, right? So the first thing we have to do with the slicer is to make it follow my mouse because it should be always in the same position as my mouse and not just static position at the middle of the game. So uh, here in the game start, we create the slicer and that should be enough. My slicer should know what to do by itself. So I'm gonna go here inside my slicer. And the first thing it does when it's created is to set its own sprite, right? To be uh, the slicer.png sprite. And now I'm gonna go to the loop tab because in the loop tab, what I want to do is I want to keep uh, updating the slicer's position to always be at the same position as my mouse. And that's pretty simple. Here on the loop tab, I can just say that self.x, so the slicer's x position will be the same as, so now I have to get the mouse x position, right? And to do that, we can just say mouse underscore x brackets brackets. Right, so now if I stop and play my game, you can see that the slicer follows my mouse on the X axis, but it's still not falling on the Y axis. So let's keep going here with the code. And on the next line, I'll say self dot Y equals mouse underscore Y brackets brackets. If I press play, you can see that now the slicer follows my mouse, right? Okay, now the next step is for us to be able to slice the fruits. So I will only slice the fruits, not if I touch the fruit like I'm doing here now, but if I touch the fruit while I'm clicking. So if I'm clicking and the slicer touch the fruit, then the fruit should disappear, right? It's like I'm slicing the fruit. So here on the loop tab on the slicer, what we want to do is we want to check first if uh, we are pressing the left button of the mouse, because we can also check for the right button, but I'm gonna check for the left. So if I'm checking for something and we have to keep doing it on the, we have to do it on the loop because it, it should like keep checking if we're pressing or not, right? I will say if mouse is pressed, so I'm checking if our mouse is pressed, right? And I have to say which button I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the left button. So if the left button of my mouse is pressed, then now I can check if this slicer here is touching a fruit, is colliding with a fruit, right? I cannot press play because I haven't finished my, my if line here. I have to say then what, right? If I have pressed the left button, then what? So. If now I want to check for collisions, if I want to check if something is touching something else, I have to say uh, get collision. So if get underscore collision. So if I get a collision and then now I have to say between who and who. So between myself and any object from the class fruit. So if I have collided with any fruit, then do the following. So first we check if we're pressing the left button. If we are pressing the left button, then I can check if my slicer is touching something, right? So if we're pressing the left button, then I check if I get a collision between myself and any fruit. If I get a collision between myself and any fruit, what I want to do is I want to destroy that fruit, right? I want to get rid of that fruit. And I cannot just say here, so we have the destroy code that destroys an object. But if I try saying here, for example, destroy fruit, these will not work. Let's see what happens whenever we try that. So I have my slicer here. Let's try slicing a fruit. It gave me an error. Let's see what this error is saying. STR object has no attribute destroyed in the slicer loop. So it is saying that it doesn't know what fruit is, right? But here on the error, it says that object has no attribute. So it is expecting this to be an object, not a class. So the fruit is our class, is our behavior, right? Whenever we put it inside the game, then it becomes an object. So how can I get the object 
that I'm colliding with because I cannot get just the class, right? So how can I get the object that I'm colliding with? So we can get the object with, with, that we are colliding with by using this get collision here. So if I have a collision between myself and the fruit, I want to get the exact fruit that I'm colliding with so I can destroy that fruit, right? So here after this line and before uh, the destroy, I want to say that my fruit is, so I'm creating a variable here to store the fruit that I'm colliding with. And I just have to repeat the same code here. So fruit is equals get underscore collision between myself and fruit. So now let's see what's happening here. If I'm pressing the left button of the mouse, then I check if I get a collision between myself and any object from the class fruit, any fruit inside my game. If so, then I will get this exact fruit that I have collided with and store inside fruit. And I want to destroy not the class fruit with, with quotes, right? I want to destroy this fruit here that I just got here, this fruit, right? Now, whenever I press play, I try slicing a fruit. You can see that it works now, that fruit disappears. And it doesn't matter which fruit we slice, we get exactly the fruit that we have sliced, that we have touched, and we destroy that, right? Pretty simple, works very well. So that's how the collision code works, okay? We get a collision between two objects, in this case, the slicer and any object from the class fruit. And then later we get the exact object that has collided with us. All right, now I want to improve visually our slicer so it can look better. And to do that, I'm gonna add some trail to the slicer. The trail is just a visual improvement. It won't really do anything in our game, but it will make our game look nicer, okay? So here, let me stop my game. And to create a trail, I will need a new class. So I'm gonna add a class here for the trail. I'll call it trail. And now I have my trail class there. Okay, so let's say that this is my slicer, right? Whenever I click and drag to slice a fruit in my game, what I want to do is I want to create a trail. So our slicer will now look like this. All right, so here, this is the last position. This is where my slicer is now. So my mouse is now here, but I have dragged from here until here. So what we do is we create copies of our slicer while we are holding the left button. So if we are holding the left button, we keep creating copies of our slicer. But these copies here, these four ones here, are different than my actual slicer because my actual slicer is the only one who can slice fruits. So let's say that this is my fruit here, okay? If my fruit is coming up from here and it passes through my trail, it should not get sliced. It should only get sliced if the fruit touches my slicer. So the trail doesn't do anything in my game, right? It's just visual. It just makes our slicer looks nicer. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to Pixel Pad. And here we'll start coding our trail. So first let's go inside our trail class. And what I want to do is I want to give the same sprite I have on my slicer to my trail, right? So here on my trail, I can say that self dot sprite. So my own sprite is a sprite from the file uh, slicer dot png, right? So now my trail has the same uh, sprite as my slicer. And the other thing I want to do is that I want to keep creating trails while I'm holding the left button on my slicer, right? So here on the slicer, on the loop tab, we already have an if that checks if we are holding the left button, right? And if we are holding the left button, we just check for now if we get a collision between ourselves and a fruit. But before I check for collisions, what I want to do is I want to keep creating uh, trails, right? So I can say that this trail, so I'm gonna create a trail from the class trail. So now whenever I press play, if I 
click on my game, you can see that I create another uh, slicer in the middle, but it's not a slicer, right? It's the trail that just have my slicer sprite. So now I should reposition this trail to be always in the same position as my slicer. So whenever I'm clicking and dragging, the trails are gonna be created on the same position as my slicer. So let's do it here. Whenever I create the trail, I position the trail.x to be the same as my x and my x and the trail.y to be the same as my y. Now, whenever I stop and play the game, if I click and drag, you can see that I can kind of draw my game, right? So I want to fix some stuff first because this should be a trail, right? I should not be drawing in the game. So the thing is because this trail here should disappear after some time. So it needs a timer to disappear after, let's say, half a second, all right? So let's go here inside the trail. And if you remember on the spawner, we have a timer, right? That's how the timer works. We create a variable for a timer and this timer here takes uh, one second. And then in the loop tab, we keep reducing the timer. And if the timer reaches zero, we do something, right? On the trail will be basically the same. So I will have a timer. So I'll call here self.timer. And this timer is gonna be equals, so for now I'm gonna use 30. So this is half a second, right? So all my trails will last for only half a second. I think that's good enough, but we can always change this, this number later, right? So my trail has a timer that is 30. I will go to the loop tab. And in the loop tab, I want to keep reducing the timer. So self.timer equals self.timer minus one. So my timer will always keep reducing. And if self.timer is equals equals zero, then what I want to do, so uh, this timer here is to control how long my, my trail can live for. Right, so after this timer is over, I want to destroy this trail. I want this trail to disappear. So I can say here, destroy self. So I'm saying whenever this timer is over, just destroy this trail. We don't need it anymore, right? And now let me save my game. If I press play, you can see that whenever I slice, now I have a nice trail that keeps following my slicer and disappearing after half a second, right? I think I can maybe even make it faster. Uh, so let me reduce this 30 here. I'm gonna use 15, so a quarter of a second. And now you can see that the trail uh, disappears faster, right? So you can choose a number for your trail and we're gonna improve that trail later to fill those gaps that we have. But for now, that's all we're gonna be doing. So make sure you press save on your game and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.